you know when i was asked to come here to give this speech i grew so nervous so anxious i have a tiny mini social anxiety but then i saw this as an opportunity opportunity which most probably will have two possible outcome number one i could make fool of out of myself which so many of us think as failure second opportunity is most likely outcome and that is called experience and you know what experiences goes a long way how many of you in the audience are dreamers can i can i see some hands good and how many of you are actively chasing your dreams good and i want you all to answer this one very very candidly how many of you are maybe scared to follow your dreams maybe because of failure or maybe because you know you think people will make fun of you or anything like that how many of you are and i am with you guys you know as for next 10 15 minutes i dissect my life in front of you all i hope points of it resonate with you and maybe you you go home with something concrete that you might find solace in so you know as further as my earliest memory goes i can still see myself laying next to my maternal grandmother my nani and as she would go on to narrate all the once upon a time kind of stories you know all, we have all heard those stories from our grandparents you know once upon a time there was a king there was a queen they they lived in a castle but for me and i can still so vividly see myself laying next to my grandmother i would close my eyes and for me it was never a king or a queen or a castle for me it always was the king the queen and the castle and i could imagine the faces of kings and queens and their backgrounds and their halls and the lay- layout of their castle so intricately that you know very early on in my life i figured that i have a strong imagination power without knowing actually the word it's called imagination power fast forwarding at for until age 10 i was living i was growing up in the hills of uttarakhand my father was a government employee we had big home big big gardens and my days would go in chasing butterflies and you know just just chasing birds that was about to change my father decided that will will move from the hills of uttarakhand which was it was a living place for me every moment was a living place and up until now and he decided that we're going to go to the city called merat for my further studies my brother's further studies and i mean merat is known for for schooling and everything and here is another thing that i have learned in my life for for achieving great things all of us need to constantly push ourselves out of our so called comfort zones you know one thing that we we can achieve and the only thing we can achieve in our comfort zones are pillows and they do not do any good so you know as i was so excited to move to this new city new school and um you know i was very ex- i was living for it i was like i had never been out of the hills i've never lived i've never been to like big school i'm so excited but my excitement and admiration very quickly faded because what happened was um when i uh, when i went to school very early on like within a 2 3 week window i figured out that i don't belong there and why i don't belong there because my classmates they 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 i think they didn't want to be friends with someone who talks about landscapes who talks about birds who talks about you know butterflies what's beyond that sky and very soon in that school i was 
I often heard and I heard for next five, six years, the word called weird guy. And I was outed as one of the weird guys. At times, my weirdness gives me wings. At times, my weirdness wants me to hide. The motive of this life is not very clear yet. For some reason, I find myself always against the tide. A great deal of passion and emotion is invested and my dreams are sharply defined. The dedication is on fire and whole of it I intend to utilize. So, you know, when everybody was, was calling me weird and nobody wanted to be my friend, I found my solace in my stories. And, you know, I would write my stories in that register and these stories were my solace when nobody wanted to be my friends i was the weirdest kid all i did whatever was going through my head i kept i kept writing stories and stories and stories police but something was about to change when i was in class ninth as usual i remember uh, it was games period was going on and i was writing my stories in my register and one of the guys from my um, class, he threw ball towards me, football, and he asked me, throw that back. And, all, and I just kept writing. That guy came towards me and he started fighting with me. And he's like, when I asked you to throw ball, why did not you? And next, in the next moment, the next thing he was, he was about to do would change my life. He took my register, he took my story notebook, as I used to call it, and he tore it apart. And I've been writing my stories in that register from like past, I was in ninth class and I've been writing since fourth class. Every single thing, all my imagination, everything that came from the world inside me was gone. And I stood up, I fought back, I gave few punches, I took few punches for the first time in my life and I felt so confident. But I realized I never want to go again through this experience where I've been writing something and it's just torn to two scrapes. And I think in that very moment, I realized in my subconscious that I want to be a filmmaker. I want to tell my stories for people to see and I want to tell my story so that they can live forever. So as I move to my next section of my life, can I urge you guys, please tell your stories. Do not take your stories to your graves. They don't do any good. We live just a handful of lifetime, but we are dead forever. So meanwhile we are living, please tell your stories. No one is going to come and tell your story. Only you can. So now, next year after 10th class, and this is a little bit funny. So after 10th class, uh, my father asked me, what do you want to take? Like PCM or commerce? And I was like, I want to take commerce. I cannot do PCM. And he was like, no, you PCM to take I was like, fine. And they got me admitted. And... I got PCM and I can I cannot tell you that was the second time in my life I was scared to death you know why because for so long I was this guy who was bullied and bullied and bullied and I knew my bullies I knew new pattern of my bullies I knew how to avoid them just put my head down write my stories everything and hope to God that everything will be all right. But now my school was about to be changed. I would run into maybe new bullies. I would have to figure out their patterns and I don't know what's, what, what's life's bringing next. But you know what? I decided to change that. Again, going back to opportunity. I saw it as an opportunity. So 
you know i i remember first day um uh, i was sitting in my school bus and i decided i'm going to be the coolest kid in the school you know what i'm going to be the coolest kid that this school has never seen and inside i was dying inside i was scared i was i was broken but outside i had put this facade of confidence it confidence so i went into my new school with full of pretentious confidence and you know i i made friends and i i was just acting as a as the best kid of the school and within 4 to 5 weeks i actually started getting recogn recognized i took part in debate competition i took part in dance competition co, co curricular activities and you know in that moment the tushar that i had been suppressing and other out uh, external forces they were suppressing me in blossomed into someone that i never expect i i passed my 12th everything was good i was full of confidence and now my father asked me beta tumko aage kya karna hai and i told him that i want to be a filmmaker and i was 17 at the time so he was like he, uh, and i told him that i want to be a filmmaker and i want to study in the best film school in the world that is in new york and my father was like not happening bhul jao and i told my father in that moment if i even have to scrub floors or clean windows i would do it on a film set because if i can't be a filmmaker at least i can be close enough to a space where films are being made so my father saw my passion and he said you know what pehle ek degree le lo uske baad you go and do your film studies and you'll have some experience of life and you tell me what should i do is like engineer i was like that settle if if for me to pursue my dreams if i have to do engineering i'm fine for years when my father planned that i wouldn't be able to watch movies i ended up watching endless movies endless endless movies and my passion for filmmaking grew larger than life and on the other side my my confidence was also on the rise because the success that i i tasted in my 11th 12th when i changed the school followed me through my college and i was invincible at this time i had confidence i was making films i was learning about everything was fine now i passed my engineering and i moved to new york and it was an opportunity again this was i saw it as opportunity i wanted to spin it best of my capabilities and i went to to the best college in films and i in my class there were only 12 student it at the time it was very hard to get into that school i i i'd been writing also for for four years i was writing this script because i knew i have to go to film school and they want the the, the one of the criteria to get admission is you need to have a screenplay so for for four years i was constantly working on my screenplay that screenplay got me into this academy when i went to class for for the first time i had 12 students in my class from all around the world i was the only indian and i was only guy who was engineer who was not from the back who did not have any background in film all the other students already had done some kind of diploma or degree from their respective countries in films and very soon like within 2 to 3 weeks time i figured that i am back to middle school again because nobody took me seriously everybody all all 11 of my classmates they were very friendly i mean don't get me wrong they were very friendly but they never took me seriously they were like i think he's confused he's he's he went for engineering now he's in films life does not work this way teacher told me one day my film teacher you know what tushar i th don't think you belong here i think you should go back to engineering and can i tell you guys one thing 
so many times we feel that we are let down we are pushed down we are just you know we are being pushed to the ground and and little did little did this teacher knew that i had been feeling i've been experiencing same emotion for my entire living life so far so he did he he thought that i'll just go he did not know that i'm the one who's going to bounce back with force and i decided that for next 3 to 4 months which is my going to be semester um, class i will just bow my head down i'll make my films for next 3 4 months my teacher did not even discuss my films he would discuss all the other students film but he would never get to my film nobody took me seriously and i'm about to wrap this up and it was i still remember it was 10th of december we were sitting in a big theater where all the graduation films were being screened mine was the first film and i was nervous as hell and my teacher i saw the look at my teacher and he's like let's see what you have made my film and i i'm not going to go how how hard it was for me to make the film i'm not even going to go there because you know what we don't make excuses we make results and when my film was played after that my teacher the same teacher who never took me seriously came to me and said that i'm very proud of you 